Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, if it's your first time here, that's Emma and I'm Joel, and we live in this motorhome. It is a 2022 Integra Steam 29V. Today, we're going to drive this rig, and I have a new head mount. One of the things that I hated the most while waiting for our motorhome was what is it like to drive these rigs, right? They're very long, and ours is 32 and a half feet long, plus we have a bike rack. And normally you can't just go into a lot and test drive one because they don't have them sitting on lots right now if they let you at all. It, what is it like driving something so long, so wide, and specifically on the E450 chassis? We do have the all new 7.3 liter V8 Godzilla engine, which to be honest is a little bit lackluster going up hills, but it's all right. And we get about 11 of the gallons. And today is actually Friday, finally off work. So we're actually gonna go from here in Redmond, Washington, all the way down to Federal Way. We're gonna be down there anyways this weekend and there's a rest area where we can get water and stay the night. It's supposed to rain this evening and we have a little bit of a leak so we want to go ahead and get that slide out to avoid some issues with that. We're going to do a walk around from my point of view and then we'll hop in and hit the road. Alrighty, so please bear with me. I do turn my head a lot for various reasons of course but let's just do a quick check so you want to make sure that there's nothing around your rig. We're going to do a little bit of a, a seal check and that's actually how I found some cracked fiberglass and a, a piece sticking out so we went ahead and resealed those. Any damage or anything like that make sure all of our windows are closed and especially in the summer that's been kind of an issue. Our valves closed, any issues. I like to check the bike tire pressure. I want to make sure like this guy for example just tuck them in there so when we're going down the freeway it doesn't rip and roar if we're only going up to 40 miles an hour it doesn't really matter so check for any issues here and then sometimes I'll even go in and I happen to know that all of these are secured but anytime that I open these guys up I just want to make sure that they're locked again double check that that guy's good and there's no debris up here every now and then if you hit a, a, a tree of course you might drag a branch and bring it along with you but uh, not an issue so let's go ahead and Hop on in. Alrighty, and here we are. So, we've got a regular key as you'd expect. We'll then turn that guy on. I like to drive with the running lights on. I usually don't drive with the headlights because they need to be adjusted, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. That has been a fun thing. So, down here is actually where you can you kick the parking brake on and then you can pull it to turn that guy off. Safety first, and there we are. So this is exactly like you would expect any other, uh, any regular truck to be. There's no difference. And so that we can all see out here, <laughs> I'll roll the windows down. It's a nice warm day. So we do have the concave mirrors at the bottom and then we can automatically adjust the top one with some buttons over here. The only other thing to keep in mind, of course, is that we do have a little bit of tail swing. So it's not gonna be a factor in this case, but you always wanna make sure that you watch the uh, watch the mirrors, make sure that you're not gonna hit like a tree or, you know, especially a pole. So we'll go ahead and put her in drive and let's head on out. All right. And I should say this is not gonna be a great example, but our turn radius is not great on this guy. <laughs> it's just it's just terrible. It's actually way, way, way worse than our Ram truck that we had before. Here, let me know when I'm good. You might have to do some backing up if you're in a tight spot. Generally, I'll park where if there's four spots, I'll just kind of park right in the middle there. I never had an issue with that. People are gonna look at us like uh, we're a little crazy. All right, good. All right. Now we do have the Helwig anti-sway bar installed, Sumo Springs bump stops on the front, and the uh, Safety Plus steering stabilizer. So that does help somewhat with a lot of the play in the steering wheel, but it is by far not perfect. I will say it's one of the easier steering wheels to move though. There's not a lot of resistance in here and we can make that light. <laughs> And you'll notice when you turn on the left or right turn signals, cameras in the mirrors will actually activate right here in that screen, so. Good 
not a fault of the motorhome at all, but there is this fun thing where because people see something so large, they really like to pull out in front of you. They just assume that you're gonna waste their time. That's just something to kind of keep in mind. Now, generally, I try not to go above 60. Usually I cruise around 55. This thing is a bit of a gas guzzler. That usually is gonna lend me some distance, but yeah, if you just take it easy and you're not in a hurry, you're not gonna have any trouble at all. And with a GVWR of just under 14,000 pounds, there's no need to be in a hurry, right? <laughs> Not at all. Now, if you're worried about your width, because, you know, obviously this is a bigger vehicle, um, I think it's a little bit over 100 inches, some, uh, somewhere around 101, 102, and then there's the awning. What I usually will do is I'll take that concave mirror, I will kind of line up on that, give me a little bit of a gap there, and then I just assume that I can fit on the other side as well. And so, kind of give me a little bit of space over here and then on the other side I, I usually do match up so that has never been an issue there is a fun thing where folks will like to sit in your blind spots uh, so make sure that you're checking your mirrors I like to check mine every 10 seconds or so uh, but check your mirrors uh, pretty frequently and usually you won't have too much of an issue on the freeways because uh, you're going to be going a little bit a little bit slower than folks uh, unless you're a mad person but if you're going a little bit slower no no trouble there now we can also activate that back camera and if i turn the lights off we'll see it a little bit a little bit better uh, that can actually help with a little bit of that tail swing if you kind of notice that uh, just so that you can sort of see especially if you're trying to maneuver you know how close are you to things uh, the nice part is it's not a like on a on the ram pickups for example there's like a it's like a seven second uh delay before it goes back to your prior screen this is an tenuous option here and if we look we're not winning any races uh it's not too noisy in here we do have the windows open of course but that's not too bad the engine does sit unlike other trucks it does sit right in here so it's a little closer to you the exhaust is definitely a lot more uh, noisy than it is in this cab here. Not too, too much torque on it. So you're not getting off the lights uh, very quickly, but it definitely gets you going where you need to be. That's for sure. Something that I did not consider to be much of an issue before we bought it, but has kind of been an issue since purchasing it, is how low this unit sits, and especially the front. The rear, it's not too, too bad. We have scraped it, I think, once going down a Seattle hill. That was my bad, because it does overhang past the rear axle quite a bit. We scrape on curbs, but specifically, we scrape the front entry step on the curb. So that's just something now that um, we just sort of expect. Not too big of a deal, but the unit's low enough, we really don't need a, a front step anyhow. And if you're ever worried that you won't be able to make it down a road, you watch a semi-truck or a city bus go down that road, you're probably fine. It's very rare that I void a road, unless it's a real small, tight road with cars on either side and like one way of traffic. I'll avoid those, but beyond that, we don't, we don't have that issue very frequently. We've got a bus, those guys like to get up nice and close to the side of your rig they uh yeah they definitely do Woo! it does get a little noisy in here but slowly but surely we've uh we've resolved a lot of those concerns our tv used to squeak a lot our front door uh, but generally you can add a little plastic shim out of a milk carton for example you can cut one up and put a shim in there that helped with the tv or a little bit of a seal around the front door helped phenomenally and then we found another squeak between the front door and the screen door so putting little seals just along the edges help with that tremendously 
and then every now and then we'll start hearing something squeak or something fall in the kitchen and it's not a big deal we've gotten very good at not having things loose uh, and and for the most part nothing we have is that fragile so <laughs> no porcelain plates and, and glass cups um, we don't hear silverware clanking around you and when we don't we don't do a lot of like stuffing of stuff so we don't wrap uh, like we don't wrap our plates with blankets or anything like that uh, our pots we do add a little we layer use, of something between we them. We use shelf liner and we just put a piece, a little square of shelf liner in between the, our pots and pans so those aren't bouncing on each other and also like our metal bowls. Yep. Ooh, got a little Winnebago hike. Hmm. Actually, the, he's got his ladder on the side. <laughs> uh, actually, this is something. So you can probably, and you probably don't see it as much, I'll duck my head, but you can see we have a bit of an overhang. and. Uh, it was much worse actually on a truck camper that we had uh, previously. Uh, this really is not bad at all. So we've been very, very fortunate with that. Generally, you know, you can just move forward and see the light. You know, that's the worst case is, yeah, you miss that. But you also don't have the sun just beating down on you, especially not if you close your upper window there. That's pretty great. Yeah. But uh, overall, I mean, you do have a big blind spot here and a bit of a blind spot over here uh, with these A pillars. But the bigger blind spot is really trying to see around this way. Uh, so, yeah, definitely use your mirrors, move your head, you know, uh, be a little bit more uh, flexible and you'll, you'll be just fine. All right. Uh, every now and then you can hear the, the tree brush along the side. <laughs> I started out with a Winnebago very similar to that. A little bit smaller though. Here's an example of a place that we actually can't go. Uh, it's one of the very few places we can't go because we don't have enough clearance to make it up there. Uh, when we turn, it, the overhang at the rear would actually smack the cement. So that's unfortunate. There are plenty of other places to get propane though. So, that back window back here actually helps with visibility. I'm going to go ahead and roll these bad boys up. And we can turn the AC on. There we are. So, this is about as much power as we have for merging. We're at 40, 45, 50, 50. and that's about it. I mean, we're gonna <laughs> let it off. Uh, and I generally don't even accelerate that fast because that, that just sucks the fuel down, so. I mean, while we're on the freeway, I'm gonna reset the, I'm gonna go ahead and turn here. All right. Should say change lanes, not turn, but. All right. So if we're real light on it, we can get around 11. Uh, generally in the city while we're in Washington, Especially we get somewhere around Yeah, I mean it's saying 8.3 right now. That's kind of a lie. We get around 9 9. It's not great But really good for a house Oh, that's nice. Somebody's putting up an American flag You don't often see that around the Puget Sound area Hell yeah, which I don't know if you can see that but our American flag actually slipped out. So this flag is a little heavier than our last flag. It likes to slip out of there. We could zip tie, but we've never had a problem with it. This is kind of how we have it all the time. And eventually it does start to tatter a little bit, but no issues there. Yeah, it's definitely not quiet, but it's not really a loud ride either. Um, 
we have a ball somewhere in the background. I think it's a ball, but it's it's it seems to roll into one side and it'll hit against the one piece of the wood and then it it'll roll to another side. So as we accelerate, it hits a wall, and as we decelerate, it hits a wall. So I'm thinking it's one of the rubber balls that we have for the dogs. That is a mystery because we have torn just about everything apart and both of us have multiple times. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. Yeah, a lot of people like to stay right in that. I don't know if you guys can even see, because you're probably a little taller than my line of vision, but uh, people like to stay right in that blind spot there. So it does take you a lot longer to stop. So we'll just leave plenty of distance here. Woo, and we got a lot of traffic. That's, that's fun. Awesome. Yeah, and I try to, there's not a great opening here. I try not to be a jerk, but I try to get out of this lane where they're gonna merge well in advance. So, oh, he's gonna be nice enough to let me in. Oh, that's great. Thank you, sir. All right, and if we can get over one as well. Generally speaking, ah, there we go. There we are. People do not like to let us in, though. Ah. Ah. Now, if you, uh, if you have an American flag on the back of your rig, some folks will give you a thumbs up and some folks will give you the middle finger for whatever reason they just don't like the American flag. The, the good news is, is that very similar to fire trucks and semi trucks, uh, kids just love this thing because, because it's, Pretty, pretty large it's pretty uh, I guess it just peaks interest you know so that's a that's kind of a nice thing all right and we're passing through Bellevue this is a, a very uh, lucrative tech area out here so they've got they've got money a lot of Tesla's and uh, the electric the fancy electric Porsche that's a, what, I forget what they call it, but. Something that stresses me out uh, and actually kept me from taking the interstates frequently when riding my motorcycle. Uh, oh, got a trailer and a class B. That's a good looking rig. Is, is all these, these like interchanges here where uh, folks will go from the HOV trying to get off real quick. Um, like this gentleman, they may not use a signal. Um, yeah, and there's just a lot of people doing a lot of things in a lot of different directions. Not a big fan. Uh, and it just slows us down. But it, you can usually, if you're already in the HOV lane, you can ride it out, uh, just leave a little more distance. Um, or if you get over well in advance, it prevents a lot of this crap. Uh, but really no different than driving any other car. And actually, let's see. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but how close we are to one line and then how close we are to the other. I'm not sure if this, this is picking up the same perspectives as, as I am for the reflection in the mirror. Still working on that, that RV wave. It hasn't quite picked up traction yet, but it will. It will. like about 10.5 miles per gallon average still and we're just slowly creeping along here picking up a little bit in the HOV lane but not much I assume these are are some folks heading out for the weekend it looks like they're gonna have a good time they've got like a rear uh, rear kitchen maybe I don't know what that is looks like a rear kit or a lot of storage back there but maybe a lot of storage that's pretty the Bobcat Oh yeah, they've got a couple toys in there. Pros to having a uh, trailer and a truck. That's a, oh, there's an old Jayco right there. Oh, that's, that's pretty nice. All right. He's got a little bit of a cargo rack. Yeah. He's got a big old cargo rack on that thing. Huh. This gentleman may not realize he has two taillights out. Ooh, and he's a drifter. Although I do bet he's getting probably 40 to 45 to the gallon. 
That is not a very bright center uh, center lamp there. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Ooh, a little uh, Imagine Travis trailer. That's a big old guy. All right. Yep. Turn signals are a thing of the past as well. I don't know if this is picking it all up, but this is really a beautiful drive. And we're on Interstate 405 southbound. And we're coming up on Renton here in just a little bit. There's Lake Sammamish out here. And it's just so green, like it's so nice. It's easy to take it for granted if you've uh, grown up here, uh, but leave for a little while and you can learn to appreciate it again. curious what the accident is. There's got to be something going on out here. All right. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Can you hit that fire button, please? That is an amazing example of a trailer that is not properly hooked up. You really don't want it to be sitting like this, right? You want to be level. Everything level. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. This is a really fun area as well. So a couple exits here. A lot of folks very impatient and trying to pass you. Uh, and the worst thing is when people pass you on the right. That is incredibly dangerous and quite frankly just stupid. And it gets bumpy in here, which adds to the nice, the, uh, it lends itself well to a pleasant experience. <laughs> yeah, you can see people moving on over. Just gonna get over into the next lane and advance because it can get kind of chaotic back th down there. Yeah, not that big of a deal, but this is stressful in a car, so there's really no disadvantage to being in a bigger motorhome other than just you have to leave more room. This is not a bad thing. Oof. Big equipment there. That is not nice to bring oh, that's terrible. Ooh, you can smell the rubber. It smells like brakes too. Jeez. All right. 
I'm sure somebody watching this is getting dizzy, so I would apologize, but hey, this is a real life point of view, right? So <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> Oh, and this is a fun little uh, loop-de-loop -loop over here, so What is that? Oh, look at that big old rig. If he can make it, we can make it. I'll tell you that. I hope we can make it on I-5. Uh, Discovery. Nice and uh, trash-filled over here. That's a shame. This area out here is uh, Des Moines, Burien, and then it turns into you got SeaTac over here, and then it turns into Federal Way down there, and it is uh, it is not an ideal place to go if you're looking to vacation and have a peaceful visit. Uh, a lot of gang activity. It's a little bit lower income. It is where the airport is, though. Yeah. <laughs> so fly in and get the heck out. That's uh, my suggestion. But yeah, it's it's kind of a shame actually. Got four winds over there with a gas can on the back of their rack, it looks like. I would not feel comfortable with my with a gas can so low to the ground like that. I, I don't know. And that, yeah, they're expanding that light rail, which is just a small train, basically. They're expanding that out to Tacoma and out to Redmond so far, and they'll, I'm sure they'll go even farther than that. North up to Everett, even. Yep. So most of the, the hot spots for this region you can access. Whatever. Like $3. Oh, we got a, Nautica, a Holiday Rambler Nautica. Oh, what a beauty. Nice paint job, very similar to ours. That's a good looking rig. So we get a better shot of it. Not cool. Here, let's get over. Uh, ah. I want to get over to let these cars in before we get pulled over for having a cell phone on my head. <laughs> it's hands free, sir, not heads free. Roll that up. Yep. Oh, he knows. He'll get in. There we are. Just enough room here. Nice and cozy. All right. Let's see if we can. Ah, we'll stay right here. I prefer to stay to the right. Unless there's heavy, heavy traffic. Ooh, we got that Nautica coming up on us on our left here. Let's get a better shot of that beauty. Got a real nice paint job. A good diesel pusher there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that thing's gorgeous. Not too long either. Enough power to tow a good Gladiator there. That's, I think, 55 to 6,000 pounds worth of kit right there. Oh, that's a good looking rig right there. Very handsome coaches. Very, uh, just basically identical or sister products to the uh, Fleetwood Discovery series, for example. The Fleetwood and Holiday Rambler. Oh, that's where the trooper was going. Rut row, a little fender bender there. All right. Front cap needs to be fixed. Oof. A little bit of a leak issue there. Oh man. Right 
And actually, I think what we'll do is we'll get off on the Enchanted Parkway just to get some like normal street driving uh, examples. Because it's really, I mean, again, it's, it's really not that different, but might be kind of, might be kind of interesting. Alrighty, let's see. in the wrong lane it looks like so I want to go straight out here okay okay there we go this is the foot part so we want to go a couple blocks farther down and go to 99 so let's But I, oh geez. Oh, more people have my idea, I guess. All right. Um. Whoa. Sheesh, I picked the wrong exit to do this at, I guess. He's letting us in. Thank you, kind sir or ma'am. Equal opportunity. All right, we'll go all the way over. That was nice. I didn't have to do that. It is actually kind of amazing how few people seem to know. Oh, that guy noticed. How few people seem to notice a camera on my face. I wonder what she's eating. Carrots? Delicious. Cheetos? Is it cheetah? No, it's carrots. I'm pretty sure it's carrots. Yeah, it's carrots. She's duping them. I'd like to make sure none of these fools are coming over into our lane here. That's a bad day. And then you just want to make sure that obviously because the uh, the front tires will go one path and the, the rear tires just kind of cut in just a little bit closer. Not that big of a deal. Just make sure you don't sideswipe the uh, vehicles going to turn left right there probably just a, a a handy thing not to do and for those that don't know this whole this whole deal the cup holders and the storage underneath here this whole deal you can actually lift it up and uh, move it out of the way and then you can you can access the cover that's behind it down here you can access that cover and get into the engine the other side of the engine so in that way it's uh, you know maybe it's worse to work on maybe it's more difficult but it's also more convenient because a lot of times you can't you got a firewall there you can't get through to the engine so then you can sit your driver's seat or your passenger seat and work on it and be comfortable they do like to do some street racing out here and we're uh, at 320th and highway 99 so they'd like to do some street racing out here people will run these lights like they don't care it's uh it's kind of sad we're coming up on fife up here and Fife and Tacoma are pretty, pretty intermingled right there. Kind of a shady area, but you can buy a lot of RVs out here. So probably not the best place. If you want to go buy a, an RV, go see Gabe at La Mesa RV in, uh, in Mesa, Arizona. He's pretty good. He treated us right. And he followed up and made sure that our experience was great. And we got an amazing deal. So I'm telling you, Gabe at La Mesa RV. Sounds like he paid us to advertise for him. <laughs> Man, we're cruising right along out here. A little faster than I-5. Starting to get into the RV dealerships down here. I will say, I don't... I, you see some of them and they just sell like Forest River products and their just entire lineup just doesn't seem as high quality as, you know, some other dealerships maybe even next door. Oh, there's Beto's. They sell Jayco products. And we went down to the location down in, I think it was Centralia, Washington. Nothing but kind to us. Let us walk through, asked us questions, let us ask questions. No, no weirdness or pressure or whatever. Just, you know, genuinely good information. I appreciate that. That's a place you want to buy from. Brought to you by 
the results of our undercover investigation actually would be a legit video though oh dealership reviews oh very interesting it'd be hard to do without buying from each of them though well no but i think like even just like the way we treat they treat it like we just stay there like, what kind of vibes are you getting yeah like there was some of them got in and the real douches and there's someone happy to want us to go on the pod there or something that you know why yeah seriously i mean you want to talk about a training video Zero to ten. It's like I'm looking to buy an RV in the Seattle area. Here are the dealership reviews, all in one video. So where would you recommend? I mean, I'd probably recommend Beto's based on our experience. Paul Everts or RV Country? Uh, absolutely not. Let this lady in. Paulsbo RV, I'd probably recommend them. They're, no, they're all right. Oh, these guys out here in Piala. Oh, look at that bullet. Ha! Ah. Nice. A Keystone bullet. That'd make a cool tiny home. All right. I hate these. Handles like a dream. LOL. Oh, there's some RVs right over here. What do we got? Tacoma RV Center? Is that it? Man, you got a lot of. No shortage of fifth wheels. No, I think they're mostly fifth wheels. Oh, they got a, trailers. an Alliance Paradigm over there in a Montana. I would say the Alliance Paradigms are pretty nice fifth wheels for. Kind of a more uh, better value proposition. Jayco makes a great fifth wheel. I mean, beautiful eagle. What is it? They've got an eagle and they've got something above it. I think. I don't know the Jayco model. There's one particular model and it has a front living room. That thing is luxury. Ugh. It's too big for us, but oh, wood, wood, wood. Was it? Is it the pinnacle? Okay, so the Pinnacle's at the top, then the North Point, then the Eagle, and then the Eagle HT. Yeah, yeah that 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 Pinnacle is, uh, that is a nice rig. That was right. Yep, yep, that's a nice rig. The North Points are also pretty nice. And if I'm not mistaken, they have some of the features. Like, I would rather not have a touch screen on my unit. And I think that's it's optional to have a touch screen in that for the controls. Uh, I'm a... I want my home to be low tech. I, I know that's crazy. A lot of people like the smart homes and whatnot. I don't know. One less thing to, well, it's one less thing to break that will break literally everything in your, <laughs> in your home. So. We're rocking the, we're rocking doorless. All right. Ooh, they have two maps. Okay, they got a motorcycle map and then a hiking map. Good for you guys. You fancy. They're fueled by herbs? Huh. I gotta say, we went into a KZ, and I'm, I've been watching them since about 2015 or so. Um, very, oh, come on! But I'm not, I would never recommend a KZ to somebody, but I will say they're slowly improving, and uh, that's what counts. I remember being at uh, Apache, I think it's Apache Camping out in Everett, and I was debating on a Tab 320 at the time and the little Winnebago, and the Winnebago I think was $10,000 cheaper, so, you know, well within my price range. And I saw a KZ that was a little bit cheaper than the Winnebago. And so I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is a pretty good unit, it's got everything you need. And then I saw a massive puddle on the table just below the front window and i was like ah no 
<laughs> I'm so glad I didn't because that would have been such a nightmare. Goodness. That one, that little Winnebago was a Winnie Drop 1710 and it did serve me well enough. Although boy, I, and I did upgrade to an Airstream, but you know, just after that, but oh man, I'm really kicking myself because the 320, that is a, that is, oh, I just love those. I just love them. If I had to pick one favorite RV, period, the 320 is probably it. What is your favorite RV ever? Ours. This one. The Integra Steam 29V, pretty good as well. I think that I can't think <laughs> like, you'd have to give me different categories and I'd have to pick one for each category. A small travel trailer. Oh, if you could only have one RV ever, if you could only have one RV ever, what would it be? The one we're in, because hopefully we pick the one that we'd want to be in forever. <laughs> a lot of this, a lot of, a lot of nonsense. I think if I moved a small trailer, I would go back to a scam. I did really like the scam. Yeah, I, I really like our, um, I really like our motorhome. I think that Jayco makes a great product. Um, and I'm really glad that they have a two year warranty, uh, because that's a pretty, that's a pretty big deal. So, <laughs> oh man, I think they make a good product. I think the 20, 29 V completely usable with the slides in that is a big, a real big deal for folks like us. All right. All right. Let's see. Lots of traffic today. I don't know if you guys can hear that squeaking in the background. That is our, those are our rear leaf springs and they've been uh, greased within the last week and they're squeaking again. Oh, buddy, you gotta get off the get off the road. I feel like this Challenger is gonna try to race us. Oh, I win. Yep. gonna fly by on the left I bet as soon as he can and there he goes nice spray paint artwork on the side as a little bit more here We haven't had a really good example of a semi truck flying by and uh, sucking the rig in just because of the traffic. Uh, but I feel like that would probably make another good video just to kind of show what that looks like and how much you have to counter it just to know what to expect. Since upgrading and getting the safety plus, it's been a lot better, but that was definitely pretty scary at first. All right. Uh, we can bypass the way station. That's nice. And we're officially back in Federal Way. Never noticed that sign before. And uh, there we go. Let's hope they. Oh, look at that little scamp! Little cutie. Oh. Yep. We had a we had a 16, but the 13s are so adorable. So adorable. We towed it with a Jeep Wrangler and uh, would not recommend. Just no, no power. Power really. What in the heck is going on here? What in tarnation? Huh. Okie dokie. All right. Nice and squeaky out here. Are we gonna have a spot? Well, first, you know what? I'll show you how what it looks like when we dump our tanks. Uh, looks like we'll have a spot. Probably have a spot. Oh yeah, there's at least three. At least. All right, a little bonus footage for you. Let's go ahead and dump our tanks. All right, so I just need to get the rear wheel just past that opening and then we're good. So we're about lined up perfectly. I don't know. 
this is how people treat our uh, rest areas. So that's gross. I don't know what that's about. Okay. So we're gonna uh, dump here and then we'll go over here and get some water. Looks like someone's having a, oh, an old Jayco fifth wheel. Looks like somebody's having a little bit of a, a mechanical issue there. That's a shame. What in the heck is that? I don't even wanna know. I, don't. I saw somebody not using gloves. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Please don't do that. A long time ago, I was a CNA. <sighs> and I saw someone changing a Depends on a, uh, on a patient and they also were not wearing gloves. So that was the worst thing ever. This process is really fast. I don't know why people have such a, such a tough time with this, but pull the black first, then pull the gray to flush out the, flush out the line. There's a trooper over there. Ah, there's a bee. Let's see what so someone was nice enough to leave on the ground over here. I don't even know what that is. And I'm hoping it's just like gloves or something, but it looks gross. All right. Just unscrew it, collapse it back up, still in there so it drains properly, and stick it right back in the bumper. Our scamp had a little PVC tube. I guess you could do that as well. All right, and you know, I'm really glad to see the troopers are, I'm really glad to see state troopers. It looks like one's contacting the owner of the fifth wheel. I'm glad to see they're uh, patrolling these areas so they don't have to shut them down. So Emma's actually over there hooking up right now, getting that hose ready for us. All right. I don't know if they're having a mechanical issue or what that is, but. All righty. Okay, okay. And we set up this, this extra, weird. We set up this extra spout back here so that it, it fills a lot faster. And as long as you turn the, the valve, it'll open it up and fill the tank a whole lot faster than, uh, than pumping it into the tank. So that's nice. That's an interesting class C. It looks like a beaver. You've got a rear entrance and a side entrance, and then obviously your two front. That's kind of neat. And then you also got, got a Jayco trailer there and then another Class C over there. All right, she's full. So go ahead, put that hot and higher. Okie dokie. Kadoki. Alrighty, so emptied our tanks and then refilled with water. We're gonna see if we can't pull up right in here and then just enough space to put our slides up. Okay, Okay. Let's 
backup camera comes in handy. All right, I'm just gonna go right over the line just a little bit. And I think we'll be all right if we just go straight back. All right, that's, eh, let me go back a little bit. The farther we are back, the less noise we get from, from all of this. Uh, a little less, there we go. All right. Looks like that gentleman's gonna pull in next to us. And let's put our slides up. Well, first, actually, let's do our leveling. So, key has to be in the on position. And I prefer to do it manually. So I'm just gonna hit up, press enter, and we'll do the front first. So it's a, we're uh, tilted towards the front here. There we go. And this thing says we're only three degrees off, but it's a bit of a liar. So we'll go like there, and then we'll bring the rear up. There we are. And apparently we're a little bit, a little bit off on the right. And that just means we're about center right there. So that should be good. I'm happy with that. Doesn't sound like any of the jacks are off the ground. So close that up. Can you flip the ignition, please? Grab the key out of there. Yep, I was right. Jayco's right over there. And I know for a fact that we have so much space over there, so we'll, and we'll go ahead and we'll go slide two, which is our rear slide, so we'll go extend. There's a button back there, but I like to use this just because. Get both options here. Done. And you ready? We've got a ladder over there, so we have to move that ladder. All right, and that's it. Let's go ahead. Everything's looking good. A little, a little messy, we need to do some sweeping in here. So that's what it's like to drive this rig. Not an excellent example, just because we don't have a lot of cars flying by us. There's a lot of traffic. If anything, we were doing the flying by, uh, but a little bit of what it's like. It's really not difficult to drive this, of course. Uh, dumping the tanks would be considered like the worst thing to a lot of RVers. Really, again, not that hard and it took us, what, five, six minutes? Yeah. If that, right? Like once a week for us, it's not bad. And uh, yeah, now we're all set up, got our levelers down, our slides out. We're uh, very content for the evening. So we're gonna continue the show of The Old Man on Hulu. So I don't know, so far, very, very good. So a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a twister, but Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you got some value out of this, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.